Are we ready for a lovely, wholesome time? Yay. Hey, Spuds, it's Jamie. Welcome back to another video of Festival Channel. I don't know, but welcome either way. Yes, I'm trying to break my own record of how quickly I say my intro. Probably not a good idea. Today, we're looking at the positive, relatable, joyful LGBT plus memes. I know we look at homophobic and transphobic memes a fair bit and other transphobic and homophobic things, but today we're here to have like a palate cleanser. Is that what we're going to call this? A palate cleanser? Are you ready? What if we kissed? Oh, what if we did? kiss. Okay. In a cosy, warm living room in the forest while it was raining and we were both boys. That is definitely LGBTQ+, but it feels very much fitting for Suddenly Gay. Ta-da! And they were gay or bisexual or just not straight. Remember to include the trans community in your holiday celebrations. After all, Christmas without the HRTs is just cismus. <gasps> no, it's not. Hold on. Take out the H and the R and- <gasps> It is. Oh my god. Trans people are required for Christmas to happen. Also, isn't there a thing that Jesus was trans because he was born by immaculate conception and therefore wouldn't have had XX chromosomes? Because where did the Y come in? But yeah, Christmas without HRT is just Christmas. I like that. Merry Christmas in this fine month of April. Fire ants are being laced with homosexual chemtrails to bite Christians and convert them to homosexuality. I feel like there will be some religious homophobes who see that and are like, oh, that's how they do it. Oh my god, I knew it. And they will genuinely think that their conspiracy theory has been proven, right? When in reality, it's just a massive joke. But yeah, the gay fire ants are on their way to bite the homophobes. <laughs> May your holiday season be merry and gay and not Christmas. Beautiful. It's nowhere near Christmas. I don't know why I'm getting holiday themed memes in spring, but I don't hate it. When you realise you'll never be a gay outlaw in the Old West robbing saloons with your boyfriend. <laughs> Sad, but also maybe for the best. I don't know what the Old West would have been like for gay cowboys. Was it an accepting time period? I really feel like perhaps not, but then I don't know the most about it, so I don't want to label it as unaccepting. If it was really accepting, we've just gone downhill since then, but it just feels like it could be a breeding ground of toxic masculinity and homophobia but that's just my assumptions from the movies. <laughs> I'm sure there's places that you could go and recreate it and you could like dress up as a cowboy for the day. I'm probably quite happy to not be a trans outlaw in the old west. <laughs> I think I will take nowadays Oh no, we don't like just coming out to school and saying I'm LGBTQ. No, it can't be that simple. That's too simple. I think that's a great way. But what do we like? Oh yeah, subtle hints, i.e. pride hockey jersey and pride pin. Oh mm, yeah, a rainbow lace here, a pride pin there. We're gonna tease people. We're gonna make all the other LGBTQs in school question, are they? Are they? Do we dare ask? Do we dare assume? What should we do right now? Violets are blue, roses are red. Yes, yeah, sex is cool, but have you ever had garlic bread? That is an asexual meme, if ever I've seen one. Garlic bread is pretty nice. Garlic bread is certainly better than flowers, in my opinion. I'll take garlic bread over violets and roses. Go comment a baguette if you love garlic bread. Is there a garlic bread emoji? Let me look this up. Because if there isn't, I think that is phobic. I sexual people. You could do a garlic bulb and a baguette, that would technically be garlic bread, and then you could do like a little green leaf for the herbs, and then butter, there is butter, you've got all the ingredients you need, they just don't have garlic bread in its final form, you need to make it yourself. They could do better. Me seeing an LGBT positive post on a non-LGBT sub, where hey, inclusivity, diversity, we're seeing things outside of the lovely inclusive bubble, the downvoted comments are the LGBT positive ones. Oh, I see. I feel like the internet and attitudes on the internet, if you step outside the LGBTQ plus safe bubble areas of the internet, it can feel like a very phobic place. I think a lot of people hide behind their keyboards and their screens and anonymous little photographs to hate on other people when that isn't something they would ever action or do in real life. Some would, but I think a lot of them wouldn't. It's almost like a breeding ground for homophobic and transphobic and all the kind of phobic echo chambers, right? So 
So although, yes, like unfortunately, when LGBTQ plus things fall onto a section of the internet that isn't specifically targeted towards or doesn't specifically draw in LGBTQ plus people and allies, there will often be a lot of homophobia on it. But when people are surveyed out and about and we get, you know, opinions of the general population and general public, we don't see that same level of homophobia. It's just people seem to gain so much power. <laughs> and confidence by going online, but they also seek it out. It feels really big and loud, but mostly it's just loud because it's people who really, really want to express being homophobic are drawn into these places. It's like a little flame and they're the ignorant moths. No, Harry, no, don't look at the light. I can't help it. Oh look, we've got the same meme, but with different words. Homosexuality has been observed, <laughs> observed. Homosexuality, Homer, Homer sexuality, Simpsons, has been observed observed in over 1500 species, but homophobia has only been observed in one species. Why am I struggling to say observed? And that species belongs to the genius Homo. Homo sapiens. Hello. I swear I've seen a thing where somebody was told that they were like a homo sapien and like, no, I'm not. I'm straight. Lovely. Yeah, this is a thing when people say that like, oh, being gay isn't natural. Actually, Karen, being homophobic isn't natural because we see a lot of homosexual behavior in the animal kingdom. What are you going to tell me? That penguins aren't natural? Get a girlfriend, son. Ah. Or a boyfriend. He's bi. Kids just like, oh, Oh, shut up, please. Stop talking. Damn, nobody want you for real. <laughs> Poor kid's just getting roasted. See, that's the thing. I don't really think that being bisexual, it doesn't double the number of people who will be interested in you because there's multiple factors at play, right? Say you're like a bisexual guy. Obviously, straight guys are not going to be into you. Lesbians not going to be into you. Then anybody who's even just a little bit biphobic or just a little bit uncomfortable with the concept of being with someone who's bisexual, not going to be with you. And then obviously people still need to be interested in you on a level of like your personality and your looks and you need to be interested in them. This kid should not feel bad. Being bi does not mean that you're more likely to find somebody than if you were gay or straight. They're gay. Oh, I love it. They made the banana gay. Good choice. Two bros rescuing each other. Lovely. We support them. Karen talking about gay marriage. Rawr. Angry, angry sunflower with teeth. I'm finding it really uncomfortable that that flower has teeth and a tongue. Ew. Like, imagine a flower with teeth like that. Like, human teeth. Karen talking about her ten divorces. <laughs> oh, me? Oh. oh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Gay marriage isn't valid. It's not divorce, and it's not various other things, like forced marriages, that are destroying the sanctity of marriage. No, it's, it's gay people wanting to get married. That's the true destructive power in this world. Imagine if the LGBT plus community were actually as powerful as the bigots seem to think they are. Like, imagine if we just had all that power. Like, imagine if all rich famous celebrities were trans, hello transvestigators. Imagine if gay marriage had the power to destroy gay marriage. Like, come on. Karen just needs to let it go. Real conversation I just witnessed while ringing up two guys and their new puppy, a dog collar, ringing up. Oh, I thought they meant on the phone, but they mean like at a till, right? Like scanning it. Guy one, look at us breaking gender norms. We bought her a blue collar. Guy two, every day we break gender norms. We're literally married, Mike. <laughs> I think buying a girl collar a blue, a girl collar a blue. <laughs> buying a girl collar a blue dog. Buying a blue collar for a girl dog is um, not the most revolutionary act of breaking gender norms that this couple has ever done, but it is a lovely little act. It's the whole as well, like good boy treats and good girl treats for dogs. They literally, you could put a boy dog in a pink tutu and they will not care. I mean, unless they really don't like wearing clothing and then they might care, but you could use the girl shampoo on the boy not going to care. Same goes for human children. If you don't raise them to be scared of stepping outside of things that are like stereotypical for their gender, then they're not going to be fussed. If you allow a boy to explore more feminine things and show that it's okay for him to like those things, like more feminine activities or clothing or colours, they're not going to think anything of it. They're not going to be concerned if Aunt Betty brings round a princess sticker book instead of a prince one. Nobody needs to freak out. It's so 
okay. Can I have a straight flag? It's somehow not fair that you despise straight people and don't flag us. I think straight people should be thankful that there was never a necessity for them to have a flag. There's a reason why there is a pride flag. There's a reason why there's a pride for LGBT plus people and not straight people. Ah, uh, my bad bro. <laughs> Literally a straight flag. It's not for straight people, but it is a straight flag. It's a little bit homophobic, isn't it? That all the flags have straight lines. My dad's a homophobic opinions when I'm around. Oh, tiptoeing. SpongeBob is scared. Is that meant to be tights on SpongeBob's head? Wow. My dad's homophobic opinions when he thinks I don't hear him. This is really awkward. Clearly there's an awareness from the dad that homophobia is hurtful. So when he's around somebody that he knows the homophobic opinions are gonna hurt, he's all like, oh, mm, better not. But then as soon as he's like, oh, they can't hear me. Homophobia everywhere. So why do it at all? It's something that hurts your child to the point where you try and tiptoe around it in their presence. Why would that not be something that you would want to kind of have an internal look at? Maybe I should readjust my thinking and my worldview here as much as I can because the way I'm thinking and the way I'm talking hurts somebody I love. Homophobes be like, no, I hate rainbows. Oh, keep the rainbow away from me. Do you know that if a rainbow touches you, you will be LGBTQ+. That's what happened to me. I was walking down the street one day. Every day when you're walking down the street. And I reached the end of a rainbow and pff, trans and by because I was right in the rainbow, it hit me twice. I really like how just some colours put together has become something so feared and so like discomfort causing to bigots. It's great. Just like wave a little flag and they disintegrate. I'm melting, melting! Straight. They have straight but not gay homophobic genes. How dare. How dare. I've never thought of this before, but that is not appropriate. Where are the gay genes? Sis. Sis. Is not. Is not. A slur. A slur. Now say it together. Sis is not a slur. Why can't you just say normal? This. The alternative to cis. If people really don't like it, you are non-transgender. That's the other way of saying it. It's not appropriate to say trans women and women or trans women and normal women because like one what is normal and two you're implying that there is something wrong with being trans and there is something like too other about trans people when in reality the only time we use the term cis is when it's contextually relevant to differentiate between like trans people and cis people which isn't all too often to be fair it only comes up a lot for me because it's literally my job to talk about trans issues quite a lot of the time and a lot of that is breaking down transphobia so I typically will use trans and cis a lot but if you think about like everyday situations and just like typical day-to-day -day life it really does not need to come up that often. Trans women are women, trans men are men so the only time when you'd have to differentiate groups of men and women is when it was important to be like you know if we're talking about topic a and we have trans men and cis men if they need to be differentiated maybe for like certain health care reasons doctors describe his condition as stable but homosexual <laughs> me how bad is it doc give it to me straight i'm afraid i can't do that where was this written his condition is stable but homosexual it's like oh he's he's healthy he's fine he's not gonna die but he is gay why is that relevant this must be old we enjoy romance songs where women sing about loving other women lesbian flag we enjoy romance songs where men sing about loving men other men we enjoy romance songs where women or men sing about loving the opposite gender the straight Look at it in comparison to the others. It's so not aesthetically pleasing. You want a flag? That's what you get if you're straight. The bi flag, huh? A romance song? I'm gonna add it to my playlist. <laughs> Can't believe JK Rowling is in The Sims 4. Let's complete that one here. LGBTQ, let's get biryani tonight, queen. <laughs> I like that. I showed that to Shaba because every family event, every like party, birthdays, every celebration, anything, we always have biryani. This was just very cute. That's the real meaning of LGBTQ. 
It's for the biryani lovers out there. Praying the gay away. No, small brain energy. Gaying the prey away. That is enlightenment. That is big brain moment right there. Pansexuals after hearing yet another ha ha you guys love cooking pans joke. Turns out I can deliberately make my voice sound like I'm three months on tea. Um. I would love to hear an original pansexual joke that was not related to cookware. I'd also love to hear a bisexual joke that isn't something to do with like bicycles or things with two wheels or two anything. Day 342. Breeding an army of lesbian geckos. See? Homosexuality in nature. Lesbian geckos. A character being gay as just a fun side fact. No, why have the character gay if it's not important to the story? A character being gay because that's the entire plot of the story. No, why would you make the entire story about characters being gay, that's weird. And this one was called, I think you just hate gay people, buddy. You can never win, really. What they're saying is just don't include gay people on any level ever, please. God created man and woman. Satan made gays and transgender. <laughs> Thanks, Satan. Thanks, Satan. I've seen the other version of this where it's um the aunt is it Hilda? I can't remember the other aunt's name. It's one of the aunts and she's just like, praise Satan. Oh, so we're sad. Oh no. Someone at work makes a transphobic joke. <gasps> How dare they? Why, why is it funny? Like, oh yes, let me just punch down on a marginalized community. How hilarious am I? Uh, but we're happy. <laughs> no one laughs. That is just the best response. If you are an ally and you're wondering how you can be an ally, if somebody says a transphobic joke, if you don't feel comfortable to call them out on it, you don't have to. Never put yourself in a situation where you don't feel safe, but just don't laugh. Make it really awkward. If they say a transphobic thing and they're like waiting for that laugh, just be like, Kristen Stewart uncensored. I want to do the gayest thing you've ever seen in your life. That sounds brilliant. Fun fact about me. Before I realized I was trans, I went on a journey with my sexual orientation. I at the very least knew that I wasn't straight and I was certainly when I was younger, I think I primarily find like women attractive and I had the biggest crush on Kristen Stewart. And because I didn't know I was trans, I was like, is she gonna, is she gonna come out? Like, you know, when you're younger and you're just like, I think there's a lot more representation now. When I was a teenager, like, you know, 15 to 12 years ago, it felt like there was nothing. Like we didn't have this abundance of streaming services and abundance of TV shows and abundance of things that were directed towards LGBTQ plus people. And particularly like things like Heartstopper and Sex Education, where there were LGBT plus characters and it, where it was like a specific show directed towards LGBTQ LGBTQ plus teenagers as well, that didn't exist. It felt like clutching at straws to find representation. So if there was somebody that you had like a suspicion about, especially if you thought they were attractive, it was just this like, oh my God, but you know, not that people ever have to come out. My dad, it's not logical how the percent of people who claimed, oh, it's not logical how the percent of people who claim to be LGBT has gone up so much in such a short time. <laughs> me, you're left-handed. Hmm. There's a similar pattern going on here and I wonder what the correlating factor is. Oh, it's acceptance. Funny that. As soon as we show people that something about them isn't bad and they're allowed to be that thing, that suddenly there's more people being that thing. But not because they weren't before, but just because they realise they can be. Like, openly themselves. Homophobes. I don't like these modern days when men can sleep with men. Ancient Greece. Incredibly gay. Nothing that would fall under being LGBT. LGBTQ plus is a new idea and we have had periods in time and certain societies and communities in the world where these things have been accepted and embraced. Anybody who thinks it's new is absolutely misinformed. Remember to stay hydrated, keep calm and carry on, and for the love of God, iron your goddamn flags. <laughs> I have to say, this is incredibly, incredibly unesthetic. It's really just not pleasing for the eye. It's all very fair that it's stay hydrated. Are you, are you hydrated? I have, I have juice. Keep calm and carry on. Yeah, depends. And yeah, iron your flags. That's a really good idea. I never thought about the fact that every single time you see a pride flag, it is very wrinkled, very, very wrinkled. And they're always straight lines. So I think it's actually imperative that you iron out the additional straight lines from your flags because they shouldn't be there. Me, when I'm accidentally flirting with a cute girl I met online, Olivia flirted 
as naturally as she breathed. Oh, because it was accidental. Also me when I'm trying to intentionally flirt with a cute girl in real life. Confused screaming. It's always the case. It's like when the spotlight is on and you have to do something. Well, I mean, not that you have to flirt, but you know what I mean? When you are trying to intentionally do something like that, it doesn't work. Accidentally, absolutely fine. And then when you actually want to flirt with somebody, nothing. The barrel is empty. Having extra discrimination from inside the community on top of outsiders, trans people, and bisexuals. I'm both. Does that mean I have like quadruple? There is transphobia, there is biphobia. Why does that exist? It's literally coming from people who faced bigotry for very, very similar reasons and still face bigotry that sounds identical but just with trans being swapped out for gay and bi being swapped out for gay. And yet they are putting that on other people. They are being the discriminators while still being discriminated against. It's not a chain that you need to create a link between, just be nice. Lesbian fashion spectrum. <laughs> Matilda. One, two, three. <laughs> I mean, Danny DeVito, fashion icon in this movie, right? Four. Hello, lesbian viewers. You're wonderful. If you want to, please comment below what number you fall into on the lesbian fashion spectrum, if any. I've had this friend with benefits 10 years ago. She ended it for a good reason. There's someone I like romantically. Go get her. Good luck. Now they're married and we're just platonic friends. But one benefit remains. <laughs> I can't believe she still lets me use her Netflix. <gasps> a decade of free. Netflix. Oh, lucky. My secret lesbian comics. I love it. Oh no, I'm straight, but I find Anakin hot. Panic. That's okay, I'm probably gay. Calm. Oh god, what am I? Panic. Anybody, did anybody have a bisexual awakening watching the, this era of Star Wars? You know, both Anakin and Padme. Very hot. A little pansexual flag with hamsters. Why is everyone hot? <laughs> Why the hamsters and cherries? Pansexuals. Explain, if you can. I don't know. Born this way with penguins. Penguins feel kind of fitting because there's lots of gay penguins. They have little families. They take the eggs that are abandoned or don't have parents. I'm not going to cheat on you. <laughs> Stereotypes do lie. With frogs. See, I'm bisexual and I don't understand the frogs. Because wasn't there a meme about the ten of the frogs gay? Not bi. This is the little king frog. Or queen frog. Or monarch frog. Or a royal frog. I don't know. Sugar daddy. C12 H22 O11 papa. Sucrose father. Fructose plus glucose man. Is that like beta delta delta fructo furanosyl alpha delta glucopyranoside human male the term human male because it's used so frequently to be transphobic to trans women like the whole human female thing is like Ugh, gives me icky vibes i'm not even going to try the bottom one but yeah the ultimate level of sugar daddy is whatever the heck that is but then it says x y so like mm. Mm. Human male and XY. I did not look at this meme before I reacted to it right now. And I'm getting like non-trans inclusive vibes from this. Yeah, maybe we don't hooray this one. You. Pointing at you. Hmm, what's going on? Yeah, don't worry about this guy. He just points at valid people. That's you and me because it's pointing at me from my screen. Sapphic people be like, ah oh, yes my awakening. Is that a character from Ice Age? Who is that? Shira. I literally googled Ice Age Lady Sabretooth and it wanted to correct it to Ice Age Last Sabretooth and I'm like no Google. I wanted to look at the Sabretooth tiger who is a woman. Okay, thank you. I want to be like hands up in the comments who had some kind of awakening from a cartoon character. I feel like is it Kovu from The Lion King? Was that for many people? Let me just remind myself. Yes, Kovu from The Lion King. Well, and I feel like it's just a thing. Comment down below if a cartoon character was your awakening in some way. Lovely. And that was it. We're, gonna, we're ending on a sapphic awakening. How marvellous. If you like this video, I like making them. So I'm always going to be coming back with some more positive LGBT plus memes for you. And sometimes like trans specific ones and bi specific ones. If there's any other types you want me to look at that you would like me to explore and I don't know, then I can do that. I've looked at non-binary memes in the past and asexual memes. If you like this video, think about giving it a thumbs up and subscribing if you want to, but no pressure. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Much love. Bye.